It's SS Engineer. Hey everybody, and welcome to another amazing, wonderful adventure through the mind of an engineer. For the next hour, you will be our guests here. I'm Lady Ada, the engineer with me is Mr. Lady Ada on camera control. And we're broadcasting live from the Ada Food Factory here in downtown Manhattan. This is where we do all the design, creating, manufacturing, shipping, testing, prototyping, all the electronic goodies that you know and love, they come from here. But right now, the factory is a little quiet. It's, it's resting. It's getting ready for another big day. And meanwhile, we're going to be broadcasting the next hour of all sorts of making, crafting, 3D printing, hacking, new products, a jam-packed show. What's on tonight's show, Mr. Lady Ada? On now tonight's that we're... show, the code is Rosalind or Rosalind. I guess you could say it a couple different Rosalind? ways. Rosalind? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rosalind. 10% okay. off in the Adafruit store all the way up to 11.59 p.m. 10% off everything that's in stock except for, of course, gift certificates. It supports us, an open source hardware company in New York City. We make things, we share things. We also have some fun company news. Look, we'll at, these, look at these happy, friendly people. That's right. That's they when love you, making when, electronics. When you buy electronics, this is the folks who help get them to you in a variety of ways, from writing the code to shipping the packages to making electronics and more. Show and tell people around the world showing and sharing their projects. Lady will go over the show and tell and more. Packed mailbag will stop by. We'll read your letters to us. Time travel, look back and roll, makers, hackers, artists, and engineers, current news, and more. Some main New York City factory footage. Got some 3D printing videos. Some new products. A little bit of top secret. We'll answer your questions. We'll do that over in Discord, where we have over 7,000 makers 24-7. The hackerspace online that you can bring your granddaughter to. Is Go sign up now. Called. Go there now so you can ask questions at the end of the show. We'll do a trivia question at the end, give something away. All that and more on, you guessed it. Ask an engineer. There is no live electronic show that does more than this, because there's it's too much work. There's kind of no other live electronic. No, this show. is too much work. Yeah, it's actually too much work to do this. This is bonkers. This is this is, and it's not just like, you know, do a show. It's just all the stuff that goes in. You have to have stuff for the show. You have oh, to do a show. It takes all to, week. You have to have all the things that go in, go into it. The so, photos, the videos, the demos, yeah. the news, the decisions, the blogging. It's yeah. I think the um, that trend of like. Uh, Instagram influencers and you know the things that happen on YouTube that's just for like just get views and everything it's a little too bad they didn't have like educational content with it that's because too bad. because like it, it was so close you know what an amazing tool um, but I think but, a, yeah, yeah and I think that's what it is like actually doing something that brings education to folks in a in a live format so that's, that's why that's hard so that's it's why more we, easy we want people to copy the ask an engineer format the show and tell format please go out there and do it some yeah. people have um, but once you start doing it, you got to do it every week. You never stop. And it's a challenge, and we've yeah. been doing it for over 10 years, so, so we we'll keep know. doing it as long as you buy some electronics. Um, yeah, please support us. Don't forget that code. Yeah. Roslyn, 10%. So, um, <laughs> anyways, uh, we have our free stuff back in the store, lady. Do you want to talk yeah. about it? Uh, so all, these, all the tiers are up. Yep. And supplies last. Uh, that's our, always our motto here for the freebies. But right now, we have uh, supplies. So if you order right now, don't forget that code, 10% off, Rosalind. You'll get $99 or more free Prim Proto half size breadboard, a great all around useful breadboard substitute for when you finish your project on your solderless breadboard, you wanna make it permanent. One nine or more, one nine nine dollars or more, you get free UPS ground shipping, Continental USA, high quality, trackable shipping, will show up, won't let you down, it's good, UPS. Two nine nine or more, you'll get a free Circuit Playground Express, our all-in-one development board that lets you use um, CircuitPython, MakeCode, code.org CS Discoveries or even Arduino or C, C++ if you like. It's got jam-packed full LEDs and sensors and we've got projects even releasing right now that we'll talk about for this board. So it's the best. All that and more when you purchase from Adafruit. Okay. 
Next up, you have different shipping options. Some are a little slower than others. Some are more expensive, but one will get to you uh, faster and easier most of the time. This UPS is one we suggest. UPS. You can also uh, go to postal. Also, it depends on what state you're in. I can tell you this as someone who has to, who had uh, all the shipping. At one point, I was yeah. the only shipper. Yeah. Um, some states, uh, Florida had the highest rate of lost packages. Yep. Um, for UPS, uh, sorry, for postal. Postal. For postal uh, USPS. And then um, so did uh, Arizona. Those were the two. But anyways, um, UPS is trackable. Um, it's uh, more expensive than Postal at times, but it is a little bit more assured. And then for international, um, we suggest DHL. Um, we have the prepaid custom stuff and more to sales through. And uh, that is pretty much the fastest way. And those are our shipping options. Those are yep. pretty good shipping options. And then if yeah. you're in New York City, um, before 11 a.m. if you check out, if it's a zip code of Manhattan, you can get same day delivery. It is possible. Yep. Okay, Lydia, okay. we have a show and tell. We People do. around the world show and share their projects every single week. Um, it's such a fun party. Yep. What was on the show and tell? I'm glad you asked. We had a bunch of Adafruit peeps and some visitor guests. Starting off with some Adafruit folks, we have Aaron, um, who uh, is, is back with a woodworking project. She has a maker space near her with some woodworking tools. So she's making one of those maple resin tables. And I've actually seen these. Everyone's seen them. They're the maple with like the blue resin in between and it kind of has this cool glassy wooden look. But she's doing one better. She's stuffing it full of NeoPixels because that's what Erin does. She showed a preview of it. She made a little block this big and she's going to be making a full table. So uh, check out the video if you want to see how she uh, did it. She showed off some tips and tricks. And also she'll do a guide later for the big project. No and Pedro showed off their Lego Cricut Rover. They've 3D printed a bunch of adapters that will let you use your Cricut and Adafruit motor parts, servos, and DC motors with Lego. I'll show that video and talk about that guide as well. But they uh, demoed it and showed it running around. It looked adorable. JP previewed this week's live stream and guide project. Um, he made a cricket so that it reacts to a loud yell by moving a servo back and forth. And so he turned that into an interactive art project. But which famous painting did he use? Well, I don't want to give it away. Uh, check out the uh, video of show and tell and find out or watch tomorrow's live stream on Thursday. Um, JP's workshop to see how he built it. JMK visiting us. Welcome back. He built a pie robot on Prime Day. It has some lithium ion batteries that are not so great, but he's gonna maybe replace those. Uh, there's a webcam, it's got some TT motors. We showed off this Raspberry Pi robot he built. Also, demoed the new version of the JMK host site. It's got some pretty slick download buttons that thank you for downloading, give you a tutorial link, just kind of like the Adafruit site does. And um, you can download the latest version of JMK OS. Um, Bill Binko from AT Makers came by. Um, He's just doing great, uh, rocking out, building circuit boards, making custom circuit boards to help people who need assistive technology this week. It's a five-time relay feather wing. Plug in a feather, you get five relays. He designed it in EagleCAD, and uh, this is a reconfigurable wing. This one is for a uh, person who uses a sip and puff machine to um, use different tools, and this will allow them to multiplex the sip and puff machine onto uh, a bunch of different... Um, uh, devices that use that as an input. So that's really handy. So instead of having three sip and puffs, only one, and then you can select which one you're using. Um, Adam M is still working on that microscope. Uh, found a lens, had a short to ground, damaged a coil, couldn't fight, figure out a way to buy the coil, so took it out, cleaned it, fixed it, and it's working. It's getting, it's getting back up and running. Got the spectroscopy add-on as well going. Uh, maybe we'll show off some samples in a week or two, but is uh, ready to put the machine into functionality and, and uh, get it working. And then C. Scott came by with an update. He's using the Feather M4 um, with an old DAC board uh, to test it out. He's using CircuitPython to make his next synthesizer, and he'll be back with more updates as he gets more working. But so far, so good. Seems like it's going to, uh, the Feather M4 will fit the bill. And that's show and tell. All participants on the show and tell get an SE on the show and tell sticker. Email support at adafruit.com. We will send you out one. And don't forget, we're always there Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Part of our Adafruit live series of shows. JP is doing his show tomorrow. Don't forget, you can see uh, what Lady Ada talked about. A little preview uh, if you want to see it on the show and tell tonight. But you can tune in.
Packet of the Mailbag. Hey Packet. We read these emails every single week at our all company meeting called State of Fruit and we also read these here to you. This one came in from Tim. Just a quick note because it must be stated you are by far my favorite vendor from availability of many awesome breakout proto boards to prompt shifting, minimal packaging, unlike the Amazon box in the box, and invoice details. You ladies rock in my opinion are enabling push forward in technological advancement. Cheers team Adafruit. Smiley face. Yay. Yay. Thanks Tim. Thanks Tim. Okay. Um, don't forget, we're on Discord, adafruit.it slash Discord. Get over there before I leave the show if you want to ask some questions and more. Um, some news in the world of CircuitPython. Um, the big news, and I think this is the one that you should check out the most this week, is go to codewith.mu. Um, 1.0 is out. Yay! We yeah, did it! Last week, we, we showed these uh, shirts that... Uh, Skull. Skull Moo. And uh, we just did our newsletter... And that was our big feature story. And if you want to have a great beginner Python editor, um, it has Serial and it has Plotter and it has REPL and it has Pygame Zero and it has using it in Pi mode. Circuit you can Python, use it with micro bit mode. You can use it with yeah. everything. It's simple. Run it on Mac, PC, Linux. You can zoom in yeah. to the text to make the text really big. It can do yep. checking for you. It um, It's all in one. It has binaries available for Linux. Mac, yeah. Windows, Raspberry Pi, so you can get started really fast. If you're an advanced person and you want like cold f code folding and like multi-line select comment on comment, you want to use Atom. But if you want the easiest to get started editor, somebody for a beginner, somebody who maybe just wants really big text, really easy, simple buttons, it doesn't do everything. It does everything. It's like the Rolling Stone said, you don't you don't get everything you want, but you get everything you need. Yeah. In this editor, 1.0 so is out. Go, go and check that out. Download it. If you know someone who's like, oh, I'm thinking about getting into programming, this is a great way to start. And there's also uh, newly released and updated tutorials. So check it out. And then give a shout out to Entol, uh, at Entol on Twitter and more. And tell, tell me you like it. And he'll uh, not only say thank you, but also check out the thanks page. Um, that was kind of neat to see all the people who put it together. And then on our blog, we posted about the internationalization of it, which I thought was neat because we want to yeah. do some internationalization efforts. And um, also a little bit of uh, background on Moo and some links to some other things uh, from all the update docs, all the things that have recently changed to just the, yeah. the most recent stuff. And then you can also search on our site. You can kind of see the history of it. So it's here. It's also fully open source if you want yeah. to contribute fuck fixes or updates or improvements. Yeah. Um, it's on GitHub. I submitted the plotter. Like, we worked yep. together to add that. So it's, it is possible you can make the editor better. So if you go to uh, adafruitdaily.com, that's is part of our weekly uh, Python on microcontrollers newsletter, um, you can sign for that. You'll get all these news. Uh, and there's a lot. There's more, there's more Python on hardware stuff that we can just uh, cover them uh, all over the place. So we put it in one spot each week. Um, it's just a lot. Uh, and that's part of adafruitdaily.com. OK, time travel. Look back in the world of makers, hackers, artists, and engineers. You're probably wondering why, was, wondering. The code, why was the code Rosalind? Why is the code Rosalind? OK, so you know this seems to be a theme, maybe a theme of life oh, no. lately. So there's all these women who did a bunch of stuff in science, and they were completely erased. In fact, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just break off character here, oh, not character. No. no, no, we, I have to mention, we were at the Hope Conference. Yeah. Um, and uh, we did a talk, and it was called History of the Maker Movement. And uh, I led the panel. I had you on there. Me. Mitch Altman. Mitch Altman. And Sherry Huss. And uh, Sherry is co-founder and pretty much the person who's uh, been doing Maker Fair for the last if you've been to 10, a make, 15, 10, 13 years. Yeah. If you've been to a Maker Fair, it's yeah. because Sherry and did stuff. I read all these books. There's like Maker Manifesto, Maker Movement, Maker of this, Maker of that. Father of the Maker Movement. And there's like every, like every, every, every person every every person at a conference is now Father of the Maker Movement. Father of the Maker Movement. So I noticed like Sherry got a race. So I wanted to make sure. So she's she's um, out of uh, doing Maker Fairs now. But I had Sherry tell the story of Maker Fair. And I had Mitch tell his story. And these stories were very interlinked. It was um, Lady Ada doing stuff. Mitch and... Uh, the more ran into each other, Mitch then did an open source kit. It allowed him to do what he wanted to do. He did workshops and then started Hackerspaces and Noise Bridge. And, and, then, then, and then he did workshops at Maker Fair. And then he did Maker stuff Fair. at Maker Fair. And so this all we really were at Maker Fair. I, met, I saw met you at Maker yeah, Fair. Yeah, so this really flowed nicely together. But anyways, um, so getting back to women. So Sherry. From, getting yeah. erased from women from history. So this is uh, Rosalind Franklin was an English physical chem chemist as an X-ray crystal crystallographer, crystallographer uh, who contributed to the discovery of molecular structure of DNA. So um, in 1951, she made a careful X-ray diffraction photograph of DNA, leading up to uh, 
this form, you know, the helix. And then uh, when James Watson saw our photograph, photographs, um, he had confirmation of the double helix, and he and Francis Crick then published. She never uh, received recognition she deserved for her independent work. Uh, she died of cancer uh, four years before the Nobel Prize was awarded to Crick and Watson. And she's called the Dark Lady of DNA. Dark, because people don't know about her, maybe. Yeah, so Rosalind Franklin. So, anyways... Um, I think I think Dark now Lady of DNA. I think now they might be teaching a so little bit about her, yeah. but it took a very long time. I mean, it was many many years. Yeah. Where Crick and Watson got full credit, she deserved. I mean, yep. I don't think it's like oh, like she should be the only one who gets credit. I think it's a shared. You know, three people work together. Yeah. She came up with. Um, she I think initially said I think it's helical, and they were like oh yeah, and then they they took that and they yeah. turned it into a paper. Um, and she was like the worker. If you're into like. How the structure of the universe. A woman discovered how like the dark energy and dark matter. Like it's just it's it is weird to just have go through life and not hear about these people. And then because we have a show and because you're Lady Ada and you know this movement that we're trying to, to yeah. help out with. When you look and see, hey, what happened on this day? You can eventually find, hey, there's there's other people who've just not been put in the spotlight. There's other stories that haven't been yeah, told. Yeah, the hidden figures. So so we we were gonna go on a trip, but we applied to uh, hope to do a talk. And I'm like, oh, I don't know if they're going to take it. It's history of the maker movement, like yeah, we yeah, say. Yeah. And um, it, uh, we got a ton of great feedback. People really liked it, and they were able to to hear stories that they normally wouldn't be able to hear. Because sometimes, if you just uh, if you write a book or if you're a venture capitalist or something, you know, that's the that's the only people that get on the cover of magazines. Sometimes, or the only people who have a voice. Yeah. And so I think that's one of those things. Like we are what we celebrate. So if we can all help and uplift someone, so that's why we like to do this on our show. Um, so go check out this book. Um, this is going to be my next book that I want to read, The Dark Lady of DNA. I'm, I'm finishing up the the five endings of the universe or the five what? five ages of the universe. There's this one cool thing. Oh, like, yeah? Yeah, there's a, yeah, there's like these things called iron stars. Anyway, What's, it, what's an iron star? It's just like when we just run out of material and eventually stars are only made out of iron. Anyways, so that's going to be my that's, next book. That's pretty cool. Anywho. All right. All right. Okay. Well, everyone learn a little bit about extra crystallography yeah, so, today. Anywho. Um, we made an announcement on the blog today. Um, we've talked about stuff that we do at Adafruit before. Uh, we do open source hardware and like people copy that. We like that. Uh, we do software. People copy that. We like that. They also uh, there's photograph styles that people copy that. We like that. Well, here's something to copy. Um, every Adafruit employee has a day off on election day. Yay! So yeah. So uh, we were researching how can we add more paid time off for our employees. And we added paid time off for charity, and we have um, holidays in manufacturing. For instance, uh, Martin Luther King Day, like 0% of manufacturing has it. A, it's a federal holiday. It's a, it's a but day. But it's not often it's a not, day given off. It's not recognized. It's not yeah. a day given off. Um, the Apple site will put a great photo of Martin Luther King up and say, think different and everything. But until recently, after a journalist kind of called out, it's like, hey, like, is this a day off for your employees? I don't think it was even afloat. Um, so anyways, uh, we're adding this. Yes. Uh, we have... Uh, a really good benefit plan for everyone. Um, one, 401k for everybody. Yeah, not, healthcare for not everybody. Not executive and then everyone no, else. There's, a, the same. there's all these articles right now about how these large companies have two different, like, oh, you're Red Badge or you're this other type of person. I saw. Yeah. Well, some big companies, more than half of their employees yeah. are. It's quarterly earnings. You know how they yeah. make all this money? <laughs> well, there's an entire other class of people. And so we decided to build Adafruit different from the start. We'll see if we get Google size. Maybe not. Maybe you actually have to be like, a different type of company to get to that size, but we're going to try it. So, anyways, let's do the best we can with what we want. We're going to do the best we can. So, anyways, um, we have one plan for everyone. Um, there's no such thing as like executive plan. And everyone else. No. So, we added uh, paid time off for charity, transit benefits. We added a mother's room. Phone um, care, dental we vision. More, yeah, we added more um, no sick time benefits. this year. And then, so we're like, what else can we do? And see, in New York, there are strict rules that you, if you're an employer, you know, you have to give people time off. For voting but, but it's only to, like two hours it's, it's only the beginning it's really of the tough. end it's really tough yeah. and so i started doing some research and i saw that patagonia said they're going to do this yeah and i linked to that in our in our post but um the way it works is uh it's a paid day off at adafruit um you can use it float as you want but we want to encourage people if they want to vote they can they have all the time they want they also, want to get involved in polling yeah they're doing poll workers there there's a lot of things you can do and this is one of those things um who cares what your politics are I think everyone agrees, like, kind of voting's a good idea. Voting's great. Except for that one guy on Twitter. Um, well, whatever. <laughs> that one guy on Twitter is like, democracy did this? Democracy died years ago, get Bitcoin. So, um, yeah. So, anyways, uh, that's what he said. He did. <laughs> so, uh, anywho, uh, that's what we're doing. Now, what we want to do is see this uh, become a little contagious. So, all the maker companies and all the people out there and all the, like, you know, 
um, charismatic CEOs who tweet and retweet all this political stuff and you don't want to change everything, you could give your employees a day off. That's right. To go vote. You guys love using our code. You love basing your hardware off of our hardware. That's cool. We do too. It's open yeah. source hardware. That's why we're doing it. So, so do this also. So anyways, um, and if you're, here's the other thing. Okay. If you're at a company. Okay, we're not stopping. No, I'm not stopping. No, don't stop. Just, no, let me give you some, some, some tips. If you're, if, if you're an employee at a company, you know, you don't want to be a jerk about something. You can be, you don't want to say, hey, how come we don't have this stuff? You don't want to do that. You can do it the other way. Send a note to the founder, the CEO, or uh, human resources. We call it employee resources. Say like, hey, what would it take for us to have this day off? What would it take? Yeah. Put it on them. Because what if they said, oh, you know, we have these company goals, or we have like, oh, you know, if the scheduling worked out this way, or, or if we can like get to this, or we can we do hit that, this mark, then whatever. we can do it. Yeah. Because they think that's a more collaborative way. It's like, what would it take for this to happen? As a group, as a team. And if they say there's nothing you could ever do ever, that's kind of a bad sign. Mm. Maybe it's time to look for another job. Um, but. If, if it's like, hey, like that's an interesting idea, here's what we could do to maybe make that work. Or and, you know, this is interesting. A lot of people have wanted to have the election day be a federal holiday. I mean, it's not, doesn't seem to be happening, um, but it's the same in every state, so that's really good. You know, around the, around the country, it's always that first Tuesday in November. Yeah. Also, this might know it's going to be. Our team or other companies, so um, there are companies that did paid time off with charity after we talked about yeah, this. Yeah, that was good. So there are people that are like, oh no, voting's getting so hard and it's getting so weird to like remember to register one. Maybe they're not going to vote this year, but they're going to take the day off to do all the things they have to. Um, you know, we we have, we extended how many days we give people for jury duty. Wouldn't it be kind of cool if jury duty was tied to registered the vote? Like, yeah, like yes, you have to do jury duty, but they can only call like when you're doing that you're you have to be you have to register you have to register the vote right when you get jury duty you spend a lot of time sitting around so you yeah you might as well no you could say no okay i understand jury duty is a requirement but when i'm there you have to spend a bunch of time get me registered to vote yeah if you're going to decide on on whether people go to jail you have to decide on uh, voting the people who make up the laws too yeah and then you know the other thing maybe this will be contagious maybe other great hardware companies will give their employees a day off maybe they'll be like hey th spend the day on us and make open source voting machines because apparently that's a problem now that's also a good <laughs> there idea isn't one yeah. so yeah. or you know do something civic oriented so that's the idea yes i tried to talk about it a bunch but this is what we're doing but it's the most important idea yeah i don't know someone else you know hope like just it's not just like open source hardware companies that are going to solve all the problems like that's how bad things are okay um or that's how good things could be um kid sent us in oh wow that's, it was uh, engineering day that's cool and uh, they're like draw an engineer and they drew you, Lady Ada. With Ada Bot. Yeah. Oh, and look at that and nice name, writing. I just like that this, this, this kid grew up thinking this is exactly what an engineer looks and like. And there's a circuit playground. Look at what a beautiful drawing. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Up. Okay. Um, open source hardware. We're open source hardware company. Well, yes. Yeah. So We're open source hardware company that also has so many great benefits. We have some guides this week. Let me talk about these guides. Some of the guides that we have. And videos. Yeah. What I'm starting to do now when we do the guides, I just want to show these off. These are some of the videos from the guides. Before no, we they're talk good about videos. The All right, what guides do we have on the big? Board okay, so what did we just show? So we oh, have we have uh, one thousand five hundred twenty-one. Sorry. Okay, go for yeah, it. Yeah, we have a lot. One thousand five. Remember, it was like only fifteen hundred, uh, like uh, two weeks ago. Now we're almost one a day. We're up to fifteen, um, fifteen twenty-one. So uh, Mike Brella put out two guides: make it glow with Cricut and make it plot with Circuit Playground Express. These are guides. The the make it series of guides. They're kind of interesting, and this is actually all. Uh, Mr. Lady Ada's idea. Uh, it was a really good idea they came up with. Um, let's have guides that are just like they're like like playing cards. They're very simple. You want to just get one thing done. We show you how to do it in Circuit Python. We show you how to do it in MakeCode. Um, we're using Circuit Playground Express as the basis because it's, it's just an easy board. And a lot of people have it, but it's just it, it just gets you started instantly. Like he, we're taking that 15 minutes and making it two minutes. Um, so make it glow with Cricut is just how to use NeoPixels, how to get started with NeoPixels, get your first NeoPixels glowing using MakeCode or CircuitPython uh, with a Cricut. And then make it plot is how to visualize sensor data. I think we use a light sensor as the example. Um, and we show you how to do it with uh, Moo in CircuitPython, which we talked about. Moo has a plotter built in. And also we show you how to do it in MakeCode. It is possible to plot data in MakeCode using the Windows 10 app. So if you have Windows 10 or you have access to a Windows 10 machine, it's really sweet. The plotting is built in. You can log data and save it and open it in Excel. Um, 
not a lot of people know about that, but uh, really handy if you have a Windows 10 machine. We also have um, those videos that we saw, starting with the crawling BBC turtle robot um, by Dana. This is an adorable robot. Everyone's seen those nature videos where um, little turtle hatchlings um, hatch out of the sand and they have to follow the moon into the ocean so that they can um, survive and sometimes they actually end up following a headlight and going in the wrong direction. Um, in this case you get to mimic uh, this baby sea turtle. You make a cricket robot with two flippers that spin and then when it uh, detects a bright light it starts moving forward. So we thought this could be a fun project to mimic uh, this, this scientific experiment of what it's like to be yeah. a baby sea turtle. You can also race them. We also don't want to make robots that just fight or anything like this. This is kind of a fun racing game, but it's also just like the, the BattleBot thing's covered. This is like TurtleBots. No, this so is a, save the wee turtles. This is a wee turtle. This is a fight yeah. for survival. Um, we also have infrared, receive, and transit with Circuit Playground Express. A lot of people have been asking. Um, I want to send data between two Circuit Playgrounds or between a remote control and a circuit playground. How do you do that? Well, this guide by Katni um, shows you in detail how to send messages between two circuit playgrounds. Really great for remote control um, or having uh, two projects that interact. Um, this next project is really cool. So we saw this accessibility project, um, the Android Gboard Morse code control. So this is a keyboard that you can uh, load onto your Android device, your phone, your tablet, whatever that will take Morse code input, dits and dots, dashes and dots, and um, convert them into letters. So you can use Morse code to enter text as a keyboard, like the keyboard is a Morse code keyboard. And um, they thought they would be, uh, Android team thought they would be great for accessibility. We thought, absolutely, let's show how you can make um, a solder-free project with capacitive touch or with buttons using just alligator clips of Circuit Playground Express. So, you, so people who see the Gboard and they want to make their own accessibility um, device can do so with no soldering and just some cardboard and some components. And finally, the Lego Cricket Rover from Known Pedro um, will show that video shortly. Oh, and one more, um, Make It Sound uh, by Mike Brella. Again, how to make audio uh, in Make Code and how to play music in uh, Circuit Python. So two ways to make your Cricket robot sing. We had a lot of guides this week. Just an update from the chat room. Uh, someone said they were at a bar where there was a plaque for Watson and Crick, and then more recently they added uh, Rosalind Franklin. Heck yeah! So change is possible. It's possible. You, people can. Is it like? And everyone likes putting plaques up. Oh okay. yeah, and more plaques and plaques next Anyways, to the plaques. We have some factory footage. Um, this is a kind of like how it's made section of our show. Main NYC. Take it away, factory.
couple more. Uh, these don't have sound really, so this okay. is the uh, stencil time. So it's kind of peaceful. Yeah, it looks like it's the feather wing, relay feather wing. Yep. Look at that bead. Now it pushes the conductive piece through. Mm -hmm. That's a squeegee, just like a silk screen squeegee or one you used to clean a window with. It just very precisely squishes a very thin layer of yeah. paste onto a circuit board. I used to do these by hand with Lady Ada in our apartment when we were just a small lady for yeah. Now we have a robot friend that helps us. Yes, it's lovely. I didn't mind doing the stencils on the spatula, but it did take a little longer. Yeah. And then here is another view. This is putting the paste down. I think they're doing a slightly more elegant manner than usual. Yeah. Usually they just kind of blob it on. This, but is, this is art. This is a lovely reflection of the Circuit Playground Express board. Yeah. And some paste dripping on. And here is one of picking places. Fall asleep or wake up to. It's been stormy, so there's a lot of, uh, yeah, a lot of clouds. The world's on fire. Um, Okay, 3D printing, No and Pedro, they have a couple videos. I'm going to roll from one into the other. The first one is Cricket, and the other one is a time lapse. Okay. Here we go. Take it away. Hey, what's up, guys? In this project, we'll show you how you can build your own 3D printed rover with Lego in Adafruit's Cricket. Cricut is Adafruit's robotics platform that you can use to build creative robots. And with the Circuit Player and Express, you can make interactive projects with lights and sounds. You can program your projects over USB with Microsoft's MakeCode. This drag and drop based programming language is easy to learn and it runs in your browser. Check out Adafruit's learning system and take a tour of Cricut for project ideas, wiring diagrams, and demo code. Download our 3D models for free and modify them to make new parts and add-ons. These parts can be 3D printed with everyday PLA filament. You can print them out yourself or have a 3D printing service ship them to you. Learn how to use motors and servos to build your very own robot. You can use the LEGO system to make mechanisms and structures to build projects. To build your own rover, you'll need just a few 3D printed parts. You can find a list of the electronics used in this project in the description of this video. Start by joining the two base plates together with machine screws. These tall standoffs will elevate the Cricut board. Line up the mounting holes and secure the PCB to the standoffs with additional screws. The base plate provides structural support and has features for attaching Lego bricks. We'll need these pieces for building the wheel assembly. The motor press fits into the 3D printed mount and can be secured with hardware. Use an impact drill to speed this up and a hex nut to secure it in place. Next, we'll need to add a rim and tire. This axle press fits into the rim and snaps onto the shaft of the motor. The two motors can then be attached to the bottom of the LEGO base plate. To keep our wires nice and neat, you can route them through the opening in the center. Next, we'll need to create a caster wheel to balance the rover. These LEGO pieces snap fit together to create a swivel wheel, commonly used in LEGO airplane builds. Now we can press fit the caster to the bottom of the base plate. We can also use LEGO bricks to create a housing for the battery pack. This AA battery pack fits nicely in between the standoffs. Place the Cricut PCB over the battery pack and secure with machine screws. The bricks hold the battery pack in place so it won't shake around too much. Connect the wires from the motor into the screw block terminals and plug the battery into the DC barrel jack. Program the movements of the motors to control your rover and create dance sequences. There's lots of parts in the LEGO ecosystem that you can use to build robotic projects. And being able to use Adafruit's Cricut with off-the-shelf components makes robotics much more affordable and accessible. Thanks so much for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more 3D printed projects from Adafruit.
And don't forget, three hangouts on the page every Wednesday. That's when I do it. All the news that's fit to extrude. That's right. Okay, um, if you have an Adafruit account, you can get the newsletter. You just have to go to your account settings. It's the only type of newsletter that we would send out, but it is not on by default. We would not do pop-ups. We would not you, do all those you things. You must opt in. Yeah. So it's hidden from go you. there, and you can do product newsletter every week if you can't catch the show or whatever. So or Maybe you just want both. Yep. Huh, Take nice. away we need a... Okay. New, 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 new. Okay, we have some new products. We have uh, a bunch of new products today. Yeah, we've, we're getting more robotic stuff in. Okay. So, um, this is handy. This is very handy. This is by request from you, and I agree, this is pretty sweet. This is a metal servo horn. Now, when you get a servo, it comes with horns. So, let me just go to the overhead, and I can show it off. So, you get, this is the, the horn itself. So, like, let's say you get your standard servo. It comes with a bunch of horns. These are these things that, you know, they... they they snap on and you can screw them in and you're like okay now i have a wheel and this turns and then you can have a like an x shape but there's one thing about these that's not so great first off they're kind of small we wanted something with a little bit more reach and also they're um plastic and the holes are really small so this is a nice long look at how long that is wow that server horn is like twice as long i don't remember exactly how long it is it's like 25 uh 30 millimeters it uh, has 25 teeth, it's uh, machined aluminum, it's incredibly strong, but very light. Uh, and it's got four tapped holes, five millimeters apart, they're um, M2 screw holes. Um, so it works great with our standard size servos, it won't work with a micro servo or a mini servo. Um, but if you've got these standard uh, chunky servos, the Metal Gear ones, or the, um, the standard you know, SG5010s, um, add it on, use the screw that comes with your uh, servo to attach it. Boom, you've got a nice servo arm. Yep. Super sweet. And someone pointed out in the chat, like, we're getting in the robotics. We absolutely are. The intersection of circuit Python is here, so Python. Python. Uh, fast iterations. Make code. Drag Make drop, code. Drag and drop. Programming. And then... Um, circuit Playground Express has the sensors built in. Circuit Playground Express. And then our robotics hardware, like Cricket, and then all of the uh, personally selected Lady Ada stuff. So there's a lot of robot junk out there, and there's a lot of expensive robot stuff that, you know... You can get a $500 robot arm. We're not going to do that. We're going to do the best robotic stuff. More We're, like construction kits. It's going to be robotics. it's going to be good robotics that doesn't yeah. disappoint you. It won't break your heart. It won't leave you and abandon you. This is robotics that you can actually get something yeah. working with, um, actually build stuff, and feel good and confident about what you've built. So, moving speak, on. Speaking of, um, we have a, a new pack here. This is the Microbit 10 pack. Now. I'm not going to show over your head because it's basically just like it's this. It's 10 of the, yeah, it's this. You get 10 battery packs, you get 10 pairs of batteries, 20 batteries total, 10 micro bits, and 10 micro USB cables. It comes in a box like this. It's a club pack. It's basically perfect for uh, classrooms, workshops, camps, whatever, where you want to save a little bit of money and you get a box with all of them in it all at once. Um, yeah, great for, great for teachers especially, but any kind of coding club or makerspace can pick these up. You don't have to be an educational uh, or university or school, whatever. Microbit is a great platform. We have um, some cool accessories for it as well, so pick some up to make your Microbit even better. Next up. Okay, this is a updated new product. This is so updated, it's pretty much new. This is the Pixie 2 camera. So this is a um, all-in-one smart camera. It's got this like ultra-high powered processor in it. It's got the camera, of course, itself. And it's got all these brains in it that let it do stuff so that your microcontroller project doesn't have to. So if you're trying to do visual recognition on like an Arduino Uno or a Feather NR52, you're going to be a little sad because you just don't have that processing power. But the Pixie Cam does it all. So um, the new Pixie 2 can detect lines and intersections and small barcodes to make line falling robots. Um, it has a 60 frame per second frame rate. Um, it has color-based object detection, so you can have it follow or tell you where a red or green or pink or blue, whatever color object is. Um, it has libraries for Arduino, Raspberry Pi, and other controllers. Now it has um, a light built in as well. It's basically, you know, you want to make a project with a smart vision system. Don't DIY it. Just grab the Pixie Cam, add it in. Um, I think it does SPI and UART, so you can use it with just about everything. And it just works, and it's uh, it's based off of CMU cam. It's a very 
a solid platform for building your vision robot. So we, we strongly recommend it. Um, it's a great little camera. Okay. And now it's even better. Next up. A battery holder. You may find this familiar looking if you have an Adabox 8. This is a three AA battery holder. You can see here, you get three AA's. You put them in there. It gives you a barrel jack. You get about 3.6 to 5 volts output. Great for 3.3 volt run logic that has a regulator on it, like the Cricut. Um, but other things can use this as well. It's just a handy, inexpensive, simple, easy to use battery holder. And that's why we carry it. It's got some Kapton tape on the back even to uh, keep it from shorting out. What a great little battery holder. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> we got a lot of different colors of this neon looking stuff. Yeah. So this is, we call it neon, but I don't want to make people think it's actually neon. It's, it doesn't it's contain neon gas. It just looks it just, just look, it, looks like it, it looks just like neon. So let me. That's the nightmare of dealing with shipping glass. I have never had a neon project work out. I just, yeah. it's just me. So I'm glad when this came about. So, um, comes in multiple colors. You've got this kind of ice blue color, um, and this is from the side. You got yeah. pink. It's a beautiful pink color from the side. You've got a cool white. It's like kind of a bluish white. You've got a warm white, maybe good for lighting if you want to make custom lamps. Um, we've got this uh, blue. It's a more dark blue than the ice blue. And we've got this nice vivid green. So I'll show you under the overhead as well. I want to say one thing about these. They're not NeoPixels. I know everyone's going to ask, are they NeoPixels? They're not NeoPixels. They're not NeoPixels. Um, All right, now that we get that out of the way. Now that this out of the way. Because everyone's like, oh, you know, I wanted a NeoPixel yeah. version. I know you do. We're working on it. Uh, but I want to make sure we get one that doesn't suck. Because uh, that's how we do it here. So this is the green. Oh, that's right. And I'm just powering it off of, actually, it's a 9-volt adapter. I just have an alligator clips here. So you can see from looking on the side, you can see the little LEDs. It's like 120 LEDs per meter, and they're just plain surface mount LEDs. Um, what's great is how much you can bend this. I mean, this is extremely yeah. flexible, um, and the silicone is very protective. You can't dunk it underwater, but you can definitely use it for projects that are going to be um, outside, you know, attached to your bicycle. Uh, if you're in a Burning Man, this would be an easy thing. It's like all the good things about a glow stick, but you can use it in art. Um, in New York City, occasionally you'll see like really, really high-end luxury stores and they always have kind of a, an amazing looking like neon -y sculpture or something just because yeah. there is a game in town to have the best like storefront display thing. And this rivals that. Yeah. Like, um, this is... This is good stuff. Yeah. So we, we sampled a lot. We've been looking at this Total like thing. five years. Six yeah, years. five or six years, and like all of it was kind of junk. And then we finally yeah, got a big pile on top of We finally got a really good source. This is good. I like it. We it's, tested them all. It's thin. Yep. It's strong. It's silicone. Um, you can see there's little markings. You can cut this, but of course, if you cut it, you know, you can cut yeah. it and you can solder to this strip because it's just LED strip on the inside. Um, but you'll have to recap it. We don't have the cap, so I you're think, on your own. There. I think what you'll see. So a lot of um, you know, in this ride share economy, and this everyone's an Uber or Lyft driver or whatever. Yeah. A lot of the cars they they put now that NeoPixels have kind of come into um, the mainstream. Um, I do see a lot of vehicles driving by with like strips, and you can see the individual yeah. LEDs. I think they'll start to move to this. This one is way nicer, yeah. yeah. For for decorating, I mean, it's 12 volt too, so you can just plug it into your your car power supply, and it's LEDs. Yeah. There's no smarts in it. It's just a bunch of LEDs in a row. Um, you yeah. can dim it with PWM, but yeah, you can't individually control the LEDs. They're all on. I'll just show the uh, the pink one. Maybe I'll hold it up too so you can see. Okay. Not on the overhead. Hold on. But yeah, you, it's they're very. These are super easy to use, and uh, yeah, no soldering required. So you can I'll, see uh, here. I'll, let me get off this. Uh, I just want to show what it's like in daytime because it's it's quite bright. Yeah. Okay. Even there in uh, in daytime, yeah. it looks yeah. like neon. Yeah. And I think we've seen signs in New York that use this stuff. So it comes in a bunch of different colors. If you'll like it, we'll yeah. get it. Uh, if anything is like, you, you know, you'll. There's a lot of things that you see neon with, like, oh, you wanted to make that, like, umbrella that lights up. Like, there's a lot of, like, cool things that you can do with this. You can now do, and you don't have to yeah. worry about the glass, or you don't have to worry about, like, NeoPixel, and you're trying to silicone it. This yeah. is so nicely diffused. It looks, it basically looks uh, completely um, solid. Yeah. Like, if you look really carefully, you can see little hot spots, but you barely, like, you need to yep. really look at okay. it. So, um, multiple colors, and we also have that wonderful color picker in the store now, so you can grab some of okay. these as well. Next up to start of the show tonight besides you are these two products. 
Data. These are actually really ancient products, but people have been asking them, so we put them in the store. We've had LED backpacks for a long time for seven segment and 14 segment displays. And people have been asking, can I buy them separately? And I've been like, well, you know, you're, you're gonna have to supply the right seven segment or 14 segment display <laughs> that goes with it. But we do stock them in the store. So I thought, yeah, let's put them in the store. Uh, Cause we had like, you know, four or five people oh, have so been asking. This one and then there's this one. Yeah, they look very similar, but I'll show them on the overhead to show you the difference. One is a, um, this is with uh, the display attached. So you, you only get this part and you supply this part. Um, and we sell them in the store. So I, I recommend getting the ones from Adafruit. Um, if you get ones from elsewhere, they may not have the same pinout. They may not work. And once they're soldered on, it's really hard to remove them. So just be really careful. Yeah, I'll say this. I remember someone had a meltdown because they they bought our backpacks and they got the, the, L the, the LCDs from someplace else. And it was like the worst thing that ever happened in their life. It was like, well, it was like a garbage display. It was like, I'm sorry, like, yeah, you these saved, are the ones that we tested. You with saved like 50 cents and then you lost an entire yeah, day. No, I think they even cost more too. That's yeah, terrible. It was all bad news. Is it bad news? So I put lots of warnings on, on the pages for these, but um, you can put in a seven segment and it gives you I squared C output. We've got drivers in Arduino and CircuitPython and Python for these. So, um, and they're very popular, the HT16K33s. And then this is for a alphanumeric segment. So this one has them soldered in and clipped. So again, you would provide um, the displays. We just give you the backpack that's soldered and assembled. And um, you can set the I2C address. You can have up to eight of these. And then if you use a multiplexer, of course, you can have you know as many as you want. So those are the two backpacks, seven segment and uh, alphanumeric segment, quad. Okay. And with that, Lady Ada? That's the that. news. Okay. Let's Epic do recap. A recap. Yep. What was in the store this week, Lady Ada? I'm glad you asked. You have a standard servo and you want a nice, strong server horn arm. This is it. It's an anodized aluminum. It's nice and long. It's got tapped holes in it. Great for your robotics project. We've got a 10 pack of micro bits. Just 10 micro bits and all the accessories you need. The new Pixie 2 is better than ever, faster, does line following algorithms, has built-in light source. Check it out, the CMU Cam Pixie 2. Three AA batteries go in, 2.1 millimeter DC jack comes out. That's what you got. We've got these uh, neon-esque LED strips. They're not addressable, uh, but they're available in light blue, pink, white, um, warm white, blue and green they're silicone sheathed so they're nice and flexible and strong great for making a cosplay or decorative projects um, check out the project page for more details on those got two led backpacks i squared c backpack control for quad seven segment and quad 14 segment led segmented displays that's the news <laughs> Okay, uh, don't forget the code is Roslyn. Buy all the stuff now. 10% off later for store all the way up to 11.59 p.m. or when I remember to turn it off. Um, we have some top secret play data. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. All right. So this is from the Adafruit Vault. Yeah. Can't ask any questions. No questions. Not, yeah, don't ask. Okay, what is this? Um, this is an Eagle CAD drawing of a poker. No, this is a, um, a moisture sensor for soil sensing. Uh, it's one of the things we don't actually have in the store. This one's nice because it uses... Um, Seesaw as true capacitive touch sensing because the Seesaw chip we use has capacitive touch input and I squared C out. Maybe we'll make a version with analog out too. So it'll be a soil moisture sensor that doesn't suck. That'll be nice. Maybe okay. we'll get, get that going. All right. Back in the vault. Back in the vault with you. Okay. Well, if uh, you head over to Discord, we're going to answer your questions if you're already there. Um, oh, look at you. Yeah. You're ahead of the game. Make so, it count. Um, if you're in there, this is where we're answering the questions. Okay. Um, do the neon strips glow on one or two sides? They glow only on this front edge. So this edge, on the back, you don't see anything. So you probably want to glue yeah. them like so. Just this edge. Just that edge. They're not, they're not like glass neon, which is all the way around. That's the trade-off. But these are much safer and they're flexible. But yeah. to be flexible, you can't have it glow. You pay for the whole thing, but you'll only need the edge. Yeah. But they look great. I mean, believe me, this is, yep. it's worth it. And um, they're only really flexible one way anyway. So 
having it glow the other way wouldn't be as helpful. Okay, is there a particular color that you think looks the best, Lady Ada? You know, all of the colors look really good. Um, the green is really vivid, the pink is really vivid. But I, there were other colors I didn't carry. These are the colors I thought were good. So if it's in the store, it's good. That's okay. how you know. Uh, if someone's using a learning system and they want to see all the NeoPixel tutorials and guides, what's the best way? Can they just search for NeoPixel? They can search for NeoPixel. There might also be a tag for LED strip. Um, you can see in the categories and on, on the learn guide page, you can search for uh, under categories. But yeah, if you if you search for NeoPixel, you'll see every guide that has NeoPixels in them. And there's a lot. I want to start with the Uber guide, just because it gets you started with the NeoPixels. Uh, let's see. Uh, some folks had some product requests, different lengths of uh, some of the things that we stocked. You can just email support at Adafruit. Um, that's the best way to do it. We can check it out. And if you find something, um, send us a link. And um, that's the best way. Like, if you're like, oh, I found this other thing out there, like, we commonly stock stuff. Uh, let's see. Is there a synth for the Feather from Modern Device? Um, no, I think there is a synth. Yeah, they just, there oh, was. There is a synth. Yeah, right. I think oh, there, they did an Indiegogo or a Kickstarter for a synth that plugs into Feather. Yeah, we saw a uh, Amazon AWS IoT device that That's uses feather. the Feather. So Feather, Feather is a format. Happening, it's happening. It is the format. Look, okay. it has everything you want. Um, are the neon strips only bendable in one dimension? No. They're I mean, bendable like, in two dimensionals, but one axis. So you can yeah. bend them, you can bend them in this axis. You, you can't bend them this way. Like, you can, but, like, it'll just kind of... Just like if you had a, a, a metal strip and you tried to bend it that way, yeah. it would like kind a, of like tweak a, at the top. Yeah. So like a would, ribbon can bend one way, but sort of not Yeah, the other think way. of it as, like, a, a, a silicone ribbon. Because it's not round, it's, it's um, rectangular. Uh, next up, um, if this is breaking the rule, don't answer it, but if it's not breaking the rule, is the moisture sensor will be coated laminated? Um... That's a good question. I don't mind answering it. Um, there's no plans to. I think people can uh, uh, do a clear coat themselves, but you know the the sensor will be um, covered with mask. Next up, uh, for Ada boxes, will we ever have like a subscription cap or anything to uh, make sure we ship out a bunch of Ada boxes? Yeah, we do. Um, we ship out the most we can possibly do, and it's over the course of a few weeks. We do the best we can. There's um, an alternative. If uh, you don't like waiting around for an Ada box, don't order it. Um, we do stock them in the shop yeah, afterwards, you can, and then you don't yeah, have to wait. Don't, don't subscribe. Just wait till later, and then you can get it next day air if you wanted to. But you just have to wait till we get out the first round. Um, let's see. What else? Uh, do, 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 do. I think I got to all the questions. And that is it. Okay. Let's okay. give something away. What do you want to give away this week? Today, I thought I would give away, um, let's give away a pink LED strip. Yeah, you're going to do pink? Yeah. You get pink. Good idea. Because uh, pink is the color. Okay. Uh, what are the rules? Rules are uh, the first person to call the phone number when we open up the phone lines and answers the three magic questions wins the prize. Only one winner per my lifetime. So if you've won something before on the show, please let somebody else win the fabulous pink LED strip. Um, I'm going to ask you your name, where you're calling from, and a project you're working on or you want to work on. So three easy questions. Okay, and I just have to dial what phone number? This phone this number. This phone number. Dial that phone number. I'm going to pick up the magic phone. Yeah, we have a different phone because the, the pay phone is on the fritz, as they say. But this phone will ring. This is our um, clear Radio Shack. Do you want to show it on the overhead? Or? Yeah, we could do that again. Just watch out for the yeah. wire. Oh, 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 it's ringing. Okay. It's ringing. I don't have time to show on the overhead. i got to pick it up. it up. Okay, it rang twice. I'm going to pick it up. Yeah. All right. Hello. You reached Ask an Engineer. Hello. 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 Hang on. Hello. I didn't hear anything. All right. That means Kay. someone else has a chance. Somebody else has a chance. So we'll just go to the overhead now. Let's see if it rings again. And if that person called and then hung up, we uh, can call back. Sometimes, you know, phones, you know, phones. Yeah. Cool, cool radio check phone. Let's see. I don't want to accidentally... There you go. Oh, wait. Turn on the other side. Yep. Turn on the other side. Oh. Show it, show it. It's blinking. 
Okay, I'm gonna pick it up. Okay, do it. Hello? 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 Hi, you rich ask engineer, and you're the winner of a fabulous prize. Hello? Okay. Hi, congratulations. Hi. Uh, what's your name and where are you calling from? Where are you calling from? Um, my name is Adam and I'm from Indiana. Hi, Adam from Indiana. Well, what's a project you've worked on or you want to work on? Well, I want to get my Ada box so I can work on that. Okay, cool. Get some robots. Sweet. Well, that's going to be coming to you real soon, I'm sure. And you can decorate it with your new LED strip. All you have to do is email support at adafruit.com, S-U-P-P-O-R-T, at adafruit.com, and say, hey, I should be getting a free 3862, and that's the pink LED strip, and uh, they will send it to you, Adam, and you'll have that to decorate your robot with. Okay, thank you. Awesome. Well, have a great night. Bye-bye. Okay, congratulations. Good work. Okay. Well, that was the night, Lady Ada. Yeah. Epic show. Epic show. Epic so much LED strip. <sighs> All right. Thank you, everybody. Go to Rosalind. And uh, thank you to the person who was in the chat room. They're going to send me a photo of that plaque. No way, really? Yep. That's so cool. Yep, yep. and I'm going to do a blog post. You're going to blog the heck out of that. <laughs> That's the circle. That's the circle of blogging. And other people will see things about DNA, and they'll say, oh, you know, by the way, there's this dark lady of DNA. You could totally make a cool neon, like, yeah, double helix. Do. You could have it edged with this pink. That would be cool. Somebody should do that. Yep. Big sculpture of DNA. All right. Uh, we'll be back next week. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everybody. Thank you to all the Adafruit team members uh, here and remote. Thank you to the entire Adafruit community, everyone in Discord. Um, thanks to all the folks uh, who would not only stick around and chat and uh, say nice things to keep like JP and Noah and Pedro and all the live folks and even Lamar and I doing this, but also who help out each other and then also th see things online when they see someone trying hard and doing stuff, putting themselves out there and they're like, hey, nice work. Thanks. Because, um, you know, it makes a difference. Yeah, there has to be some balance to the force. <laughs> Believe me, it's like there's no. Yeah. So there's, thanks for doing it's that. It's never. It's never too much. It's uh, it's it's cheap and free to say, hey, good work. So thanks everybody out there for yeah. your good work. Keep it up. Be excellent. We'll do the same. Other. All right. Um. That's it. We're we'll out. See everybody next week. This is your moment of Zener. Bye. Good night, everybody. <laughs>